Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome to number six of the series of a Rust edit training. This video is going to be covering over the top 10 tips and tricks that I can personally think of that I wish I knew first going into Rust edit. I hope will help a lot of you guys out whether you're a beginner at Rust edit and you're just now starting off or whether you've been using it for months or even since it came out. So to get started, the first one we're going to go over is the remove duplicates tool. This one is by far the first and most handy tool to use for optimizing your map, making sure you don't have any duplicates. All right, so within this little dinky house that I made, um, I have purposely created a number of duplicate prefabs, I believe like four or five inside here. So as you can tell, they're stacked on top of each other. We're gonna go ahead and run the remove duplicates tool. I'm gonna to show you how to use that right quick. So you're gonna to navigate to the top left of your Rust edit menu where it says tools. You're gonna to go to prefab tools. And then you're gonna to go to remove duplicates. And as you can tell, it says removes any duplicates that are stacked on top of the exact clone. What this means is anything with the exact same scale and the exact same position, it will just remove however many of them that are cloned. So we're gonna go ahead and run this and it should remove. It's very quick in the process, at least on this small map, the bigger the map and the more complex everything is, the longer it will take. So as you can tell, that was almost instant and it said it found and removed five duplicate prefabs. All right, so if we go inside this dinky little shack that I made here, we can go ahead and check these walls that I placed. And as you can tell, there are no more duplicates. So as you can tell, it will only delete the ones that are cloned. That is the remove duplicates tool. Highly recommend using that for one of the steps for optimizing your map or making sure you don't have any redundant prefabs. It's a great tool to use, highly recommend it. All right, tip number two, how to make perfect circles as well as how to construct them into a spherical shape. So what you're gonna wanna do is find a prefab that you would like to use to create a circle. I'm gonna go ahead and spawn in a stone wall, but as you can tell from this map that I'm on, I've made some pretty interesting shaped uh, round things and spheres. You could do a number of things with this tip I'm about to show you. So to get started, you're going to go ahead and want to find whatever prefab you want to make within the round shape. Now, this isn't for an exact circumstance. This is just a very helpful thing for you to be more creative. And you could do some really cool things with this. Just going to go ahead and drag that in. So what we have here is just the normal stone wall. What we're going to do is duplicate it. So by doing control D duplicates it. So as you can tell, we have two of them now. To do this circle method, we're gonna go ahead and click on the Y axis, and then we're gonna go ahead and rotate it 180 degrees. So it's facing the opposite way of the other one that we just placed. And then we're just gonna drag it out a little bit. Once we do that, I'm gonna select both of them, Control D, and then right over here in the transform tool, where it says on the Y, 90, we're gonna go ahead and leave it 90 and go ahead and so now that we have four, we're gonna go ahead and select them again. This is kind of a rinse and repeat once you get started. Control D, set this to 90. And you can probably see where we're going with this. Select Control D, 90. Now this is a very basic example, but this is how you're gonna create near perfect circles within Rust Edit. Using this method is very helpful for creating silos or cylindrical shaped things or even round or spherical shaped things. How you can go even crazier with this is if you select everything, if you press control X, it will move it to the local movement from the global or you can select it from this little down arrow right over here on the transform tool. And then you can move these arrows and you can do some pretty interesting things with those. So as you can tell, this would make a pretty a pretty wild pillar where we could even go as smooth as possible and make it to where they're just barely connected. So let's go ahead and go one step further. We're gonna go ahead and drag it up in the air a little bit. We're gonna duplicate it. We're gonna do Control D and then we're gonna switch it to local movement. So we just Control X and then yet another key bind. We're gonna press Control E to open up the rotate tool or over here in the transform, you can select rotate. This is where it gets a little interesting because as soon as you move some of these axes, they do some pretty unique uniform movements. So we'll go ahead and change them a little bit and let's just see what we wanna make here. Let's just do that. We'll go ahead and raise this up a little bit and then we will control X, control D to duplicate. And then we're gonna move them upward. So that would be the green arrow. As you can tell here, you can make some pretty strange shapes with this. 
So this is mainly just a, a tip for you to be more creative than myself right now. So you can do whatever you want with this. It's just a very helpful tool or trick to know how to make round things. So go wild with it. Hope you guys enjoyed that little part. All right, so this next tip will probably save you guys a ton of time in the future when, if you start applying this early on to your maps and prefabs. And it's gonna make your stuff seem so much more professional and more well done and well thought out. And that is to remove flickering. This is probably the one thing that drives me crazy for any of you that know know me. Um, now I am guilty of this occasionally and it's by accident. However, doing removal of flickering can save you a ton of professionalism if you don't do that. So let's go ahead and get started on how to easily remove flickering from your prefabs. The most easiest way that I found is that if you select everything, we're gonna go ahead and control X and we're gonna bring it to local movement or over here on the transform tool, you just switch from global to local. And what we're gonna do is press control E to bring up the rotate tool. And then we're just gonna very slightly adjust these axes. Like I mean, just barely click and move. And as you can tell, it removed every bit of flickering. Now what causes flickering is whenever two prefabs are on the same position in one of the different X, Y, or Z coordinates. So what this means is, let's say we have this cabin floor. It's at negative 227, whatever, uh, 20, and then 187. If we duplicate it and then just move it or just have it in a very different position, let's go ahead and just add a couple. The more you add, the more flickering there will be. As you can tell, we have quick flickering starting to happen. That's because all of these are on the same position nearly, um, with the exception of one of the axes. So to change that, select them, local, control E, and then just barely adjust one of the axes. And as you can tell, it removes all the flickering and it makes your prefabs and maps look so much more professional. Um, I highly recommend removing all the flickering on your prefabs. So I hope you guys enjoyed that little tip. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. All right, tip number four. This is trying to avoid editing the map on the very edge of your terrain. So what I mean by this is if you disable the water here, I just have an example of me lowering a lot of the terrain and then using the smoothen tool on the very edge. So let's go ahead and disable the water. I'm going to show you what I mean. So if you've noticed whenever you're editing your maps, if you're having any of these lines go pretty much straight down on the edge of your terrain or even straight up, that's typically caused because you used the smoothen tool on the edge of your map. So let's go ahead and open up the smoothen tool. And this is uh, what I mean basically, but if you use it on the edge of the map, it does this horrific like flat plane, I guess, going straight down or straight up. I highly recommend you stay away from doing that just because in the game, it will create a very strange image up in the edges of your map where it looks like the terrain just infinitely keeps going. So players are like, what's up with a, what's up with that? So how to fix this, it's very easy. We're gonna go ahead and use the flatten tool. And since we're so far under the water, you really don't have to worry about it looking perfect just because it won't even show up on the map. Now we're, we're here to do a good job. So we're gonna go ahead and just select the flatten tool we're going to make the size probably like 10, 15 or so. What you want to going to do is go to the lowest point in your map that you want to keep. So let's say I wanted the lowest point to be about this, uh, this peak right here. We're going to go ahead and control right click and it matches the terrain to that height. And we're going to go along the edge of the map and just kind of redraw where the map should be. And it just immediately gets rid of those those terrible looking planes that show up on the edge of the map. And don't worry, you can make your map look much better than what I'm doing. I'm just doing a very quick job. But basically, you could just keep swiping. You can use the smoothen tool. Just avoid using it on the edge of the map. And you can smoothen this stuff out pretty easily. The more time you spend on this, the nicer you can get it. So we'll go ahead and just as an example, make it look a lot better what it was so like I said all this stuff's gonna be underneath the the ocean itself so no players are gonna be able to even see this stuff down here uh, the deeper you go the less visible it is on the map basically but avoiding using the smoothen tool especially on the edge of the map will save you a ton of headache and wondering why your map looks really weird when you're in game so that's really about it on this tip 
let's go ahead and go to the next one. All right, so this next tip I have pretty much covered in a previous video going over how to make roads and river paths within Rust Edit. However, I still feel like this was worthy of my tips and tricks video. So what I'm going to cover as far as the roads go is how to fix these really jagged edges or if your road's doing some really harsh clipping and not very smooth at all and how to fix it. So what you're going to want to do is now that you have your road down and you're wanting to know how to fix it or make it look even cleaner, you're going to open up the path tools. Make sure you're on the path type road and then you're just going to click your road to edit an existing one. So as you can tell, our road's not very clean. It's very harsh edges. What we're going to want to do is make it much more smooth. To make this road look so much better, we're going to go ahead and press Control A. It's going to select all of your nodes on that said path. And if you wanted to deselect some of the nodes, so if you didn't need to do it on all of them, if you control click, it will deselect them and then select them again if you click again as well. So if you needed to unselect something, you can just do that as well. But I'm going to select all of these just because I want this entire road to be much nicer and way less jagged. Once we have all of these selected or the ones that you would like to have selected, it's going to open up the transform tool. Towards the very bottom of the transform tool, there is a thing called node type. It's very hidden down here. We're going to go ahead and tap on that down arrow menu. And as you can tell, there's another option. It says Bazier or Bazier, however you pronounce that. We're going to go ahead and select that. And immediately it makes the roads look so much nicer. It smoothens them out. It doesn't have any round edges. I'm sorry. It doesn't have any sharp edges and everything's round. It looks so much better. So whenever we're done editing that, you can just go ahead and apply your terrain modifier, your supply, your topology, whatever else you want to do. I've already covered that in another video, but I wanted to go ahead and show you the linear and Bazier option or Bazier, however you pronounce it. I'm sure somebody will comment down below. So let's go ahead and move to the next one. All right, keeping prefabs within your actual map itself. So I have seen many times where a map maker has added a oil rig outside of the map limit. And you, I believe you can still access this area. However, if it's outside the limit, NPCs won't spawn and the puzzles will not react perfectly. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and use an oil rig since that's one of the main things that I see people add outside of the map. And I've lowered the terrain over here in a very beautiful way. As you can tell, I'd spent a whole lot of time doing that. But basically, we're going to go ahead and check and see if this is outside the map. And if it is, I'm going to explain why it's not good to add things outside the map. So we're going to go ahead and tell by clicking on show water. We're going to go ahead and disable that. So as you can tell, within the map range is where you're going to see the proper terrain. So right here is where the ocean would be. But what you're going to want to do is with any water based monument or anything that you're adding outside of your your main island, you're going to go ahead and make sure it's above the terrain at least. So as long as it's above the terrain, so now the oil rig will be perfect. So make sure whenever you're placing monuments or custom water based monuments that you're within the map bounds itself so that players can actually access it and they're going to work as intended. Auto saving. I'm sure a lot of you experienced mappers are probably already aware of this. However, maybe some of you guys haven't ever heard of this, but within Rust Edit, there is an auto save function and it is very helpful for in case your Rust Edit were to ever crash from your computer doing too much work or uh, removing too many duplicates that you've created. So I highly recommend enabling auto saving. To enable this, we're gonna go ahead and go up to the top left of our Rust Edit once we're in a mapper in, in the actual editor. And then we're gonna go down to preferences. You're gonna see here that we have auto save enable. We're gonna go ahead and enable this. So toggle weather auto save function is active. Highly recommend enabling this. You can also set the auto save interval within minutes. So you can make it save within a set number of minutes. So if you wanted to save it every 30 minutes, you can. If you wanted to save it every 10 minutes, you can. Personally, I like auto save interval in about 20 to 25 minutes. And then you can set a maximum. So how many backups it's going to save is three. So that's a very helpful feature. Auto saving, I highly recommend using, especially if you're new to map making. It's going to save you a lot of headache. What this one is, is basically smoothening out your custom staircases. If you've ever made a custom staircase within Rust Edit and you bring it into your map in game and try it out, your player is going to walk up your staircase very jagged like it's going to be quite bouncy just because there's not a built-in collider on your stairs to resolve this and make it so your player walks upstairs really smoothly is what you're going to want to add is a prevent movement volume now there is another volume it's called the invisible collider you can also use that one as well 
However, in this case, I'm going to use the prevent movement volume. That way players can still shoot through this staircase that I've made. Prevent movement volume basically is just like a invisible collider, except you can still have items pass through it. So if you were to drop something on the ground, if you were to shoot through it or throw something, you can still shoot through it. The invisible collider basically just acts like a brick wall. So by adding a collider to your staircase, let's go ahead and add one to this staircase just so I can show you as an example. I'm just going to go ahead and drag out this prevent movement volume. We're going to flatten it out pretty thin, doesn't have to be perfect, and then we're going to make it about as wide as the staircase itself. When you do that, you're going to want to find about the angle of your staircase just by control E and then rotating your, your shape. We're going to go ahead and drag it up on the stairs and then just line it up as best as you can. Doesn't have to be perfect. The more close you get it to your stair angle, the better, just because it's going to be more smooth and your player won't hit those little those little edges. But basically, you just want to make sure this collider is on top of those stairs so that a player walks on the collider instead of the actual steps themselves to make it a lot more smooth. And it should look something like this. So now whenever you're in game, you're walking up the stairs, it'll be a nice fluid motion. Hope you guys enjoyed that tip. If you ever make any custom staircases, you will really appreciate this because it makes your, your life a lot easier for players complaining that they have to jump up the stairs the whole time. All right, let's move on to the next one. And last but not least, we have the in editor viewable map by pressing G by default on your keyboard. If you press it, in the top left, you'll see it says updating map, please wait. If you press it again, it'll pull up the in editor map. This is very helpful, so in case you needed to check out your map to see what it would look like in the game, this is a very good representation of that. You can also teleport to wherever you would like to go just by double clicking on the actual location. So you can double click to wherever you want. Let's say I wanted to go to Lighthouse in the top right. Double click, and I'm there. The end editor map is a very helpful tool. Also, if you guys are interested, you can join the Discord down below. I'll have a link in the description there. Uh, there's a lot of helpful map makers in there as well. So if you're new or a professional, whatever you'd like to do, you can just hop in the Discord and chat with us. We'd love to have you around. I hope you guys enjoyed this tips and tricks video. And if you did, please leave a like on the video, drop a comment and all that love. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much.